There are some new developments today on the status of the pastor sentenced to death in Iran after converting to Christianity. Youssef Nardakani was arrested back in 2009. There he is pictured with his family. He was found guilty of abandoning Islam. Iranian officials claimed that Nardakani was convicted on rape charges initially. Now under intense international pressure, Iran admits that he is being held due to his Christianity. Jordan Seculo is the executive director of the American Center for Law and Justice, and he joins me now. Jordan, welcome. Uh, Thanks this for is me, a, a case that uh, so many of us have followed closely in, in this country, and there are some pretty big new developments. Why have they changed the charges against him, and what have they changed them to? Well, it's taken 889 days for Iran uh, to admit now that this is all about religion, all about his Christian faith, Pastor Yusuf Nader Khani's Christian faith. The change has come because the story which started here on Fox News and in the, the U.S. and the Western world has spread past the European Union, who's spoken out on Pastor Yusuf Nader Khani's behalf, to places where Iran has allies uh, diplomatically, like Brazil. I was in Brazil a week and a half ago with the vice president of the country because it's become a huge story there. Brazil has full diplomatic relations. While I'm there, we had a team at the U.N. Human Rights Council, which had a special report on Iran. There, uh, Mohammed Laranjani, whose brother is an Ayatollah, who's the head of the judiciary, he, he himself, Mohammed, is the head of Iran's human rights division, if it, and they do have one, heard the report at the UN Human Rights Council about Iran, spent all of his time on Pastor Nader Khani, and said, no, it's not that he's an apostate, not that he left Islam and became a Christian. It's because he has a house church, because he proselytized minors, and because he offended Islam, even though we have religious freedom, because he said Jesus is the only way to heaven, he's offended Islam, and that's why he's on trial. First time Iran has said it's all about yeah. religion. Well, let me ask you this. Now that they have these specific charges that clearly relate to his Christianity, it, does it make it harder or easier for them to let him, to let him go or to back off of this in any way? I think it makes it a little bit easier from the back off because of what you've got now. It's not just ACLJ and our European affiliates and not just the West. It's not just the White House, the State Department or Europe, but it's countries that Iran relies on diplomatically and economically. Brazil cannot be lied to again. They did lie to the government of Brazil. We had a document given to us by a senator saying this had nothing to do about Nader Khani's faith. He's not even a pastor. So the key is they still won't admit it's apostasy and they still will not admit it's a death penalty, but we've got countries now engaged like Brazil, like the Netherlands, who are making sure he's alive every day. They've requested to go to Tehran to meet with Pastor Nader Khani. It's a huge development as the case continues to gather now international attention from governments, which is huge. I mean, we genuinely hope that they will give that opportunity for some of these countries to visit him, to verify, uh, you know, his well-being. There's a lot of arrests, though, of Christians going on in Iran. And do you Absolutely. think that this is, you know, going to put the spotlight more squarely on this issue and the pressure uh, on Iran and those other Christians who are being held in that country. You know, I read a report this week and 17 more Christians were arrested. Some let go, let, get let go after a couple of hours. Some are still in jail uh, today. Others get charged for, you know, two, three years. What Pastor Nader Khani represents is thousands of people who are in Iranian jails that are forgotten about. And you know, Martha, he has no idea what's going on around the world about him. He refused to renounce his faith. He could would have, would have been let go. He refused to acknowledge Muhammad as a prophet. He would have been let go. And he does not know that the world is paying attention to him. And he's taking a stand. And in his case, why it's so important, why you've seen the world react this way, yeah. is because he represents the thousands of people who are who are forgotten about in these jails, who we don't so have right court documentation that. on. You're so right. And hopefully they'll allow visitors in and he'll get some sense uh, of the groundswell and the support that exists for him and his fight around the world. And thank you, Jordan, uh, for bringing a lot of attention to this. Good to talk to you Thanks, again. Thanks, Martha. We'll